Welcome you, give yourselves a hand for being here on tonight. So happy to have and see such a great turnout. My name is KW Tulis, I'm the field representative for our Congresswoman, Nanette Berrigan. We're gonna go ahead and start our community town hall. Uh, we are so grateful tonight to have with us the wonderful mayor of the city of Carson. We're gonna ask that Mayor Robles to come at this time. Let's give him some love as he come and bring greetings. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to be here. I want to thank the Congresswoman for doing this and for being here. I want to just point out that we don't have a cardboard cutout of her. She's here. She's not afraid of her constituents. Let's give her a round of applause. She's not scared. She's here. She represents the community. She represents Carson. And she's here. And we love her in Carson. She was uh, at City Hall earlier this week as we were recognizing Teacher of the Year from uh, 27 different schools that uh, service the great city of Carson and our students who go to schools outside the city of Carson. So we're really, really lucky to have her as our Congresswoman. Um, excited to be here with her. This is our alma mater. Both the Congresswoman and I graduated from Stephen and White Junior High, so it's a little special to be here as the mayor and the Congresswoman. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of Stephen M. White, where we had the Congresswoman and the mayor who both graduated from the same school. So again, thank you for being here and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Before we bring up our wonderful Congresswoman, we do have just a few ground rules on tonight. One being we want everyone to be respectful. We respect everyone having a voice tonight, but we want you to be respectful as you engage uh, with the community. The community here in Carson uh, deserves to have a town hall meeting, and we want you to be respectful as you ask your questions. We ask that you do not interrupt anyone. If you agree with them or if you don't agree with them, so let it be. Uh, one, after our Congresswoman will address us tonight, we're gonna open it up for the community. She wants to hear from you. And that will be done by this mic here, this one mic that's here to the right. Um, we ask that everyone do, during that time of questioning to stand up and, and form a line here and we will hear your question. If we can't be respectful, we're gonna ask that you just simply leave. Is that all right? All right. And as our wonderful Mayor has introduced our, our Congresswoman wanted her first town hall meeting to be right here at home in the school that made her into the person that she is today. So it is indeed an honor and a privilege to introduce to, to you the one who's fighting daily for the constituents here in Con Con Congressional District 44, our wonderful Congresswoman, Congresswoman Nanette Barragan. Let us receive her at this time. Let me ask how many people here live in Carson? Excuse me. Fantastic. Right. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance, first. please. No. Okay. Or you do anything else. Please. I will run the town hall. Thank you, sir. Okay, then we're going to do it. Have, have a seat. You guys have that? Okay. okay. Excuse me. Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to honor our country and our flag. Let's let them do the okay. pledge. Many men died for, and women as well. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Isn't That's it, right. It's a sad rhythm. Why do we have to do that? Promote, you tell a congressperson to do that. A little smirk on your face. That's really unacceptable. Wow. Okay. Every town hall should start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Can you all hear me? I guess you don't have that. Twice. She's speechless, folks. I gotta tell you, that is the third time we've had to press for the Pledge of Allegiance to be done. 
That's outrageous. I want to start. I want to start first by thanking everybody who came out tonight. How many of you here have never heard of me before tonight? Okay. Well, thank you for being here. Let me take a minute first to recognize some people that have showed up tonight, some elected officials, some very important people that I want to take a minute to recognize. First, you all heard from the mayor. Um, thank you so much, Mayor, for being here today. Albert Robles. We have the former mayor of Carson, Mr. Jim Deere. We have the former city council member, Harold Williams. Thank you so much for being here. Former city council member, for the district, uh, the 15th, Bob Farrell. The former mayor of Carson, Vera Robles DeWitt. Thank you for being here. And I want to take a, a special minute to recognize somebody who I met this week, and she, I don't know, I don't see her anymore. She just, oh, there she is. Teacher, Carson Teacher of the Year, Miss Croft, who teaches right here at Stephen White Junior, well, Junior High School to me. It's a middle school now. And so it's a really an honor to be here. This is where I went to school. Back then it was junior high school. And I'm really fortunate. How many places in America can you be the daughter of immigrants from Mexico? whose mom had only a third grade education, who came here for a better life for her kids, to come to this country, to come to a school here in Carson and make it. You, all, you know only one, uh, rather 10% of students go to college in this district, only 10%. My district includes areas from San Pedro, Wilmington, Carson, Compton, and Watts. Being able to beat the odds shouldn't be that difficult. It should be an opportunity that's given to everybody. And only in America can your parents have that dream, me come here and go on to not just graduate from college, but then become an attorney, a city council member, and now a member of the United States Congress. By, I'm not going to give you a big bio. Uh, most of you have known something about me. Let me tell you about what it, I've been working on and what is happening in Washington. If you haven't been following, there's a lot going on. First of all, we have a president who's acting like he could do whatever he wants to do. Your mouth. You have to respect, respect our 
Get your up out of your mouth. Let's go. All right, let her talk. As long as she doesn't disrespect him again. Respect our president. Respect the president. Respect the president. No, this is what you did to Dana Rohrabacher, Daryl Issa, and Evan You pulled this Republican. crap with Republicans all over the state. Oh, president. <laughs> yeah, hypocrite. So start respecting our president. Your comments I love your YouTube video. That was woman. so respectful. Your YouTube video was so respectful. respectful. That was so respectful. No, I'm an American. I'm an American. I can go wherever I want. Are you an See Kyle. See Kyle. <laughs> Lock him up. You started the meeting by bashing Trump. No, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You want to bash Trump? Go do it somewhere else. Go do it on your YouTube channel. Like that's what you said at the beginning of the meeting. Respect. Each other. That's what you said. Will you apologize for the remarks that you heard about president. our president? Respect our okay. president. Why don't you Go start ahead. by respecting our laws? How about that? Are you for sanctuary cities too? I bet you are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Whoa. Go back to Russia. Really? Go I'm back to Russia. He doesn't uh, sound Russian. The real racist. The real racist. He's losing his mind. I'm an American. I was born here. I'm a native. Okay. Everybody can speak with this human being. But here's the thing. Wait, 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 I don't want confrontation. I want you to be respectful. You're not going to start the meeting disrespecting Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump and Jeff Sessions. June 30th. June 30th. Y'all got till June 30th. Jeff Sessions is coming in June 30th. Let her speak. Let her speak. Let her speak. We will. She better not disrespect the president again. That's all she's concerned. That's all she's concerned. She's all she's the president. She needs to honor her position. Listen. I am listening. Guys. Okay. Listen, guys. Let's listen. Okay. You understand our expectations. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Let her speak, okay? As long as she don't disrespect the president, she's going to call day law. I don't respect nobody who doesn't disrespect my laws. Respect the highest office. You don't respect my laws. Why the hell should I respect you? Okay, just respect the president. No, she, she started it, not us. She did. That's something that I have been working on and will continue to work on. It's a bipartisan issue that we've worked on across the aisle. Do you know that this district is one of the most heavily polluted districts in the country? And right now, we have just gotten word from the AQMD that they want to come into Compton to test the air because of the possible air quality issues that are happening there. They have found initially, they have found total pro, and they're going to put in monitoring stations to make sure it's not what's called hex chromium or chromium-6. Tonight, I just came from Compton, where there is a town hall going on by the AQMD to inform the public about what they are about to do. If you followed what happened in Paramount, California, it was terrible. People have been breathing this air for years, and now kids can't even play because the soil is contaminated. So we have pressed the EPA to get involved early and not wait for the years, and they have. And so we're very grateful because the EPA has stepped in to work with the AQMD to make sure this issue in the district is being addressed. And so if you want to know more about it, please reach out to our office. We can tell you as well where the live stream is happening from the AQMD. Um, it's an air quality issue that I will continue to fight on. You have my commitment that I am not only going to be a watchdog and a hawk, but making sure that we fight for our environment because every child deserves clean air to breathe. And that is something that we are 
Speaker, I am proud to say we are about to introduce our first piece of legislation. And one of the things that I made sure that we did is that we got a bipartisan bill, that we go to our Republican counterparts to come together with a piece of legislation that we could introduce. And let me tell you, as the president of the freshman class, I have been one of the very first people to reach out to folks across the aisle. Because while there's a lot of people in this state that want you to fight everything, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those kind of people that's gonna sit down and listen to both sides to find out where we can get some positive work done. And as the president of the class, we have about 24 Democrats, but there's also about 26 Republicans who have become some of my very good friends. Rhinos. People who say, people who want to just do good in this country. People who want to fight things. And so we are working closely with them. Our first piece of legislation is bipartisan, and we're proud to say it's going to be to fund urban parks, which we need. More open spaces, and I'm glad to see that it's an issue that is being addressed by both sides, and we'll be introducing that piece of legislation in a couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm, I can't tell you how much I made sure to implore on my staff that wherever we can find bipartisan support, we need to make sure to do that. And while you may hear in the television about all of the big issues where there may be a big fight, there actually are a lot of issues behind the scenes where we are working across the aisle to get things done. We are all waiting to see what the infrastructure bill is gonna look like, because let me tell you, everybody, everybody, regardless of where you live, regardless of your party, we all want to be able to create jobs in the district. Because when everybody does better, people at the bottom, when you get working class families into the middle class, guess what? We all do better. And people know that. People know that. And so we're gonna, we're gonna wait to see what is in this infrastructure bill, because I am gonna be fighting to make sure we get funding for not just the port, which is the largest economic engine in the region, but also for bridges, for roads. I mean, we're talking infrastructure. Yeah. We need to move to clean energy, which is hugely important yeah. that we do that, especially in a district like ours. So, 